Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. And as we continue our series of morning meditations, today I want to take a little detour from our usual work at looking at one of the readings for the daily office lectionary, a reading from morning or evening prayer, because I want to talk today about the feast day that we are celebrating on the church calendar, and that is the feast of Corpus Christi. On the Thursday after Trinity Sunday, and usually also commemorated on the Sunday following Trinity Sunday, it's, it's so good you do it twice, we celebrate with special intention the Feast of Corpus Christi. Now, in a way, this feast day is actually a redoing of the service on Maundy Thursday. Because on Maundy Thursday, one of the main emphases of the particular Mass appointed during Holy Week, right? Remember, Maundy Thursday is the Thursday after Palm Sunday before Good Friday. On that day, the major emphasis, of course, is that Jesus at the Last Supper institutes for us the blessed sacrament of his own body and blood. He takes the Passover meal and the elements of the Passover meal, including the unleavened bread and the blessing cup, and adds a new importance and meaning to it. Just as the Jews have spent every year remembering the Passover on a particular day by having this remembrance meal. Now Jesus takes that and adds this new meaning for those of us who are part of the new covenant, which is all of us are included to be in. This new covenant is to be sealed in his own blood and he would give to us his own body and blood under the species of bread and wine. So jumping into St. John's Gospel, uh, chapter 6, beginning at verse 48. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. And as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now, pretty plain words there from Jesus. We're not talking about a symbolism. We're not talking about an analogy. Um, this is not like when Jesus says, I'm a good shepherd, that we expect him to actually be out there uh, Monday through Friday guiding a flock of regular old sheep, right? It, that's an analogy. When Jesus says, I am the door or I am the gate, that's an analogy. That's not what Jesus is saying in this particular lesson. He is straight out explaining to the people that, that he is the bread of life and that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood. Now, how does that happen? Well, we also know that it says in the scriptures that at that last supper, he took the bread, he took the wine, the cup, and he said, this is my body and this is my blood. If he says that we are to have, to eat his flesh and drink his blood so that we may have eternal life, then he will provide the means necessary for that to happen. And that happens through the sacrament of the altar the Holy Communion service. Now, we as Anglicans don't have the very involved doctrine of a church like the Roman Catholics who call it transubstantiation. Rather, as Anglicans, our doctrine is the real presence. In other words, we, we are not really defining how it happens. We're taking Jesus at his word, right? He says, this is my body and this is my blood. And unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He wants us to have life. And so he obviously has provided the means for that to happen 
under the species of bread and wine, which are become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Now, the real sadness this year for Corpus Christi is that we cannot be together to celebrate. My goodness, how sad it is. I mean, I have been blessed as a priest to be able to continue to say Mass throughout all of this Corona tide. And today, let us pray with thanksgiving for the gift of Jesus' own flesh and blood given to us, that we may have eternal life. And let us pray, pray, pray that we will return to our public worship soon, that we may all receive the bread of life. It is our Lord's will, and he certainly will fulfill it in our time. Returning to worship, returning to the reception of the sacrament, that we may eat his flesh and drink his blood and have eternal life. I hope you have a wonderful Corpus Christi Thursday, that you'll join us at 1030 today and participate with a spiritual communion during the communion service. And then again on Sunday, we will watch again, celebrate again, pray again, and adore Jesus Christ in the species of bread and wine. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. God bless you.